Pretty cool. All right, so I'm gonna start off with my first demo. And uh, one of the things I really like about our learning group is that we'll share information and that sharing of information can sort of inspire us to sort of look at other uh, tools and techniques. So on one of the previous uh, uh, meetings that we had, uh, Kuntz shared different tools of doing pivoting and so one of the tools he mentioned was this chisel tool. So, you know, I was curious, like, okay, how does this tool work? Is it any good? So I went ahead and uh, took a look at it. So, and so the scenario I'm going to show. So, yeah, I think there, there's some echo. Okay, that's better. Cool. Um, okay, so our situation first off is that we have our pen testing box here, the booty box, and we have the target box here, the, the windows box, right? And um, initially, if I curl this port 3000 on the windows box, so that, that's the IP address of the windows box, I get back uh, this web server information, right? So apparently there is a internal only vulnerable web server on 3000, but right, that would be a little bit too easy. So the scenario I wanted to show is if there was a firewall blocking that port, so it's not available remotely. So this is how you can configure a firewall rule on Windows. So I'm using the ADV advanced uh, firewall components, and I'm making this rule here that says to block uh, any type of TCP connection to the uh, local uh, 3000 port, right? So I hit that. And now if I go back to this one right here to my pen testing box, right? If I run Nmap against that port, you notice now that it's in the filtered state. So it's, it's firewall. And again, if we uh, try to run our curl again, right? It's just hanging here. So it's blocking. So this, this is sort of a really good example to show you how a host-based firewall actually works and how it can be configured to sort of block uh, uh, services from uh, being accessed for, remotely. So um, our test case is that our pen tester somehow had access, had, had a sh has a shell to this box. So uh, to do so, I'm going to be using Netcat just to sort of uh, give me give myself that access. So say some, somehow uh, the uh, the pen tester was able to find a vulnerability uh, and run Netcat and okay, running Netcat. Okay, cool. There it is. And now we have a shell here over at the Windows box, right? So with this access. Uh, he wants to, you know, so one of the first things our pen tester could do is run netstat on the Windows box. And uh, from running that, right, he'll notice that there's this service running on 3000. But, but externally from his box, he can't access it. So this is the problem that, that we're facing right now, is that there's a service running on a port, but the host based firewall is blocking access remotely from our uh, uh, launch box, right? So we have to figure out a way, how can we get access uh, to this uh, 3000 port? And the way we're gonna do that is to use that chisel tool. So, uh, okay, so the, this bottom one is uh, my Netcat shell there to uh, Windows. So to do that, first you have to run chisel as a server on uh, my Linux box here. So this, this is the command that you have to run on your Windows box. So what's, what's it doing here, right? So Chisel is gonna be acting as a server and it's going to uh, be listening on port 7,000 as a, uh, at, at uh, using its reverse shell capability. So that's what's happening here on the Linux box. So we run it, so it's running. So now on our, uh, Windows uh, shell down here, right? We also have to run uh, the chisel command. So it's gonna be chisel.exe, make sure it's there. Okay, it's there. So chisel.exe, and it's gonna be running in client mode. And we specify the IP address of our Ubuntu box, uh, 237.132, and the port was 7,000. So 7,000, and um, so what we want to do is we want to create a, a reverse connection to 3000. And so that's the port that's going to be accessed on the Windows. So we're giving access to port 3000 on the Windows side. And how the Ubuntu box will access it is through his local host 
and or actually i think it's one or the other where basically ooh, yikes that's that's not good so basically we're saying uh listen on port uh 3000 locally and then i will give you access to 3000 on the windows box so that's what's happening but before but before we do that let's just sort of do a sanity check in terms of you know what what do we have currently so so currently because we ran the client we okay where is this 3000 that is funny okay so let's see what's happening here chisel do we have another instance of chisel running oh okay this is sorry this was an from a, a previous run so let's kill that and okay so well once again let's baseline it right so we baseline it and uh according to what we're seeing right no open ports but then we run the chisel command oh wait we had to run the oops okay so okay once again seven thousand so that was seven thousand and then okay now it's connected okay so i should probably redo that but Basically, what I wanted to share was basically uh, after you run, when you run the server on, on locally on Ubuntu, it opens that 7,000 port, right? And then once you finally connect it with, when you finally connect it here on, on your, your window shell, then you get this 3,000 port, right? So let's, let's walk through what happened, what happened here, right? So what happened here was that, okay, the firewall is blocking port 3,000, so we can't access port 3000 here on, on the windows. So what, what Chisel did though, was that because outbound connection from windows is allowed, right? So this windows can call outside to other machines. So what we did with uh, Chisel was that we connected back to our Linux host here, which had that, that 7,000 uh, port connection. And the client was connecting back here on port 7,000. And with its connection, it opened port 3,000, it shared port 3,000 so that now we can access it locally on the Ubuntu box for 3,000, right? So it, it's very, it feels very counterintuitive to, in terms of what's happening here, but let's, uh, let's, let's, let's think it through, right? So according to my setup right now, right, what would be the I, IP address I would have to use to uh, get to that, that 3,000 port on Windows? So, you know, group, uh, group participation here. What would be the IP address? I would have so, to use so so that would be that ip address that you have here in your curl right this okay this one, so let's try it 273 146 okay so so let's try it we try it and it and it just hangs oh but because you set it up as a port through the local host you're actually just grabbing it through the loopback there you go you're exactly correct right so again so so so, so, so this is why these kind of exercises like asking the question making a hypothesis, I guess, and then verifying it, right? That really solidifies the understanding because otherwise it's it's very unclear and it's just, and usually it doesn't, you don't get a really good uh, grasp uh, uh, of it. You don't have like the right mental model, but by going through this practice, like, okay, I have this hypothesis, I run it. And so in this case, you're, you're absolutely right, right? So what's happening here, like once again, because the firewall on the Windows host here, it's blocking remote connection. So remote connections, from its external IP address won't work. So what's, uh, okay, let's see if I have it here. Okay, so what, what Chisel did for us, it used that pre-existing 7,000 port and it, it used that to tunnel all the traffic to 3,000, to 3, right? So it used a pre-existing one that was allowed for, it, for tunneling to get to the port that we're, we're interested in. And sort of uh, finally to sort of, you know, show it from a web browser, right? Just to sort of uh, see it. So again, like you're saying, right? We had to use the, the, uh, the local host IP address and using that, we now have access to the vulnerable web server. So, right, really useful technique. And there's a lot of concepts here that you sort of have to really grasp to sort of really understand what's going on. But you know, going through that process, it's it's sort of so so critical to sort of understand what's necessary to solve these kind of problems. So uh, you know, that concludes my demonstration. Uh, any other questions or comments? So, for this to be successful, yeah, does the initial netcat mm -hmm. shell need to stay active the entire time 
ah. for the fizzle command in order to work to to do this kind of like okay because because i remember doing things like this for mm. like setting up burp suite right like yes. where i'm setting my proxy uh -huh. um i'm proxying my traffic i see some commands in there that are saying proxy so it's setting up a proxy uh -huh. but yes. yeah the netcat session was to ever die on windows side does that mean chisel also dies uh that that's a really that's a really good question so yes chisel will will, will die so uh but 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 we have to like think it through in terms of what it all means right like you're saying so in this particular demo example the the setup i had was that somehow the adversary got remote cat uh, remote code execution with a net cat with a net cat shell right so that was our access in to be able to run commands on this this window target and based on that access that's where we, we ran that chisel command so because of how windows processing works because windows uh the chisel command i believe was a part of this a session when you kill it it will kill that chisel session i believe but there are ways to spawn processes in windows that are disconnected from your your shell session right so in, in uh, so to answer your question if an adversary were to use a different technique to spawn that chisel process that was disconnected from my netcat session then if this gets killed then that would be perfect the chisel will still work fine but, but and again, that is just because due to this particular scenario I set up, in a lot of pen testing uh, scenarios I've seen, say you have remote connects uh, remote code execution through some kind of uh, web vulnerability, right? Where you can execute command directly with like a URL, some kind of encoding a variable with a URL. In that case, there's no pre-existing shell, right? It's just your execute command based on the URL you're specifying if there was like, you know, a remote co co uh, code execution here with like a uh, vong uh, question mark, and then you have your variable and then you type your command, right? So in this case, you would then type your command here. And uh, it was, if, if, if the vulnerability was, so it would spawn and live at its own process, then it, then it will keep on living. So in this case, there's no netcat shell dependency whatsoever. But but yeah, uh, that's that's something that you have to be very mindful of in pen testing and red teaming is due to what dependencies are, are sort of currently in place. And if one of those dependencies are somehow not working or died or unresponsive, that could potentially kill the effect that that you had at, at, that you really wanted at the very end. So yeah. Wow. Very cool. Um... Thanks. Yeah, so that's that's fascinating. Like, so so if you had shell access, but you were wanting to get access to a resource that firewalls you off, yeah, setting up this reverse proxy, you now see the access because it's coming back to you as if you were sitting on the system. Exactly, you're spot on. Yeah, that's that's logically what you're enabling with this technique of tunneling. Wow, that's just. Oh, that's actually really, really cool. That's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. The first time I did something like this and I use a different tool. I, th I think I used one of the earlier something tunnel.exe from one of the really old school uh, 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 red teaming uh, groups. And yeah, the first time I did it, it was just like, it was really mind blowing to me because in terms of remotely, right, the firewall is still there and it's blocking my connection. But I'm, use, I'm using some this other technique to sort of completely bypass that. And I was just like, this is crazy. You know, this is this is this is just madness. So yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay.